Now, we're going to talk to Dr. Andrew Cross, who is the president and CTO of NewTek. Hi, Andrew. Thanks very much for joining us. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about one of the best things that we saw at IBC this year, which was NDI, uh, which is NewTek's new protocol for sending real-time video over a network. I wonder if you could talk to us about how you came up with this idea and what sort of problems it's intended to solve. Well, here at NewTek, we've actually been doing video over IP for almost 10 years. And it's actually been really interesting to watch what's happened because, you know, 10 years ago, there was no such things as, you know, general cell phone service or everybody having internet everywhere. And so this is something that we've seen, you know, changing over the years. And we, we looked at the industry today and we look at the industry and where it's going. And I think it's, it's very obvious that, that what IP brings us is, is truly amazing. It allows any device anywhere in the world to talk to any other device anywhere in the world. That's something that SDI cables, HDMI cables, you know, things like, it's just not even imaginable to think that way. And so when you, you take this ability for anything to talk to anything, you say, well, how on earth could we take this really, I mean, world changing technology, I mean, it really has changed the world, and apply it to, to what we're doing in the professional video, video space. And you start thinking that way, that there were all these opportunities that you suddenly see and the, all these ways that things can work together that, that really change the whole way you think about, about video and the way it works together. And when we started you know, looking at this, it, 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 we got very excited. I mean, I, I think, although I don't like the term, I, the, the concept of Internet of Things is interesting, where you can put devices on a network and they just see each other and understand each other. And I think that what we're doing, because you hear the word IP a lot in the video space at the moment, but I do really believe that what we're doing is, is very different from that. Because what we've taken is, even though I don't like the word, the Internet of Things approach to video, where you bring a video source, you bring it onto the network. Now, any other, any other device on that network that can um, understand video sources um, would, would be able to work with it freely, it'd be able to put out its own video. So you end up with this, this kind of infrastructure where everything on a local network that's producing media, so that's video, audio, or metadata, can really talk to its talk to each other, you can pull in sources from anywhere on that network, you can piggyback them, but you realize that it's a totally different way of thinking about how video, video production, video transport is, is going on. And that, that's something that's very exciting to us. For people who aren't so familiar with how networks operate, um, I wonder if you could just talk for a minute about the difference between uh, conventional video wiring and putting video on a network. I mean, as far as I understand it, it's the difference between point-to-point -point connections and putting everything on a network where everything is available to everything. Well, could you just tell us how that works? The way we've thought about, you know, the, the whole industry has thought about video for the last, I mean, gosh, 50 years at this point, is that you take device A and you connect it up via a cable to device B. And when you, and, and actually a lot of what the industry is doing currently with IP is just trying to replicate that, but put it over IP instead of a, you know, an SDI cable or, you know, com composite video before that. And so, well, the, but that's not really embracing what IP does, which I think you, you spelled out very well, which is IP isn't just connecting device A to device B. It's really connecting any, any device in the world to any other device in the world. So the moment you start thinking that away, it means that any device can just see any of the other devices that could produce video on the network. And so I think that, that is a, a, a very key fundamental difference between working over IP and working on in kind of more traditional SDI-based um, video environments. So NDI is a bit like a, a real-time video internet where uh, addressing video is as simple as addressing an email, perhaps. <laughs> That's the goal. Um, obviously, there are going to be, uh, I mean, like, like everything like this, you know, I mean, the, the, the way in which actually maybe the most interesting thing to me is I, I strongly suspect that the way that this is going to get used is not the ways that we're even thinking about now. I think that the potential is huge and we saw, see all these yeah. cool things that people can do with it. But, but I've even had, as we're developing the, the, the final APIs and we're working with some beta customers, they're making suggestions of ways to use this that I had never considered. And that's maybe the most exciting thing of all. It's always a sign of a good idea when it generates new ideas. Uh, but at the same time, we've got to remind ourselves that uh, sending video over on network depends on available bandwidth. Um, presumably, you've built in all kinds of flexibility for the future 
with NDI. Um, that is correct. So NDI on its own, as it exists today, will take video and expose it on a local network, or as you said, a, a, a wide area network. But, but it's, re it's relatively easy, and I know of at least a few companies who are working on things that bridge local area networks so that it takes sources that are on, on one local yeah. area network and basically bridges them over a lower bandwidth connection with better compression onto a, onto, a, onto a second local area network. And so now these networks just see each other. You can easily detect if a video source is being used, so you don't actually need to bridge all video sources from one network to another network. You can just bridge them dynamically as they're being used. And so actually it doesn't, it, it doesn't even take up that, that much bandwidth to share these networks. It's just dependent on how the video is actually being used, which once again is the kind of thing where if you're thinking in the traditional SDI world, it's, concepts like that are just not even possible to think about. So at the very minimum, we're replacing traditional video routing. But how do we do this? If I have a conventional camera, how do I get the output from that camera on the network? That is correct. Um, in fact, I, I'm not quite sure what a, a traditional video router really completely means in the concept of IP video because you know, the, the, I, the, the routing is built into the, the overall protocol. Any device can see any other device, and so you don't yeah. need to patch them in any yes. way. So it's a big message here. Um, you don't need special devices to get your video onto the network. You just need your existing cameras and a capture card with a, a special piece of software. And my understanding is once it's on the network, every device has an equal status with every other device. So for example, if you're using a TriCaster, you'll see the normal wired inputs uh, from your cameras and other video sources. But in the same list, you'll see your network sources. And these can be other devices uh, and cameras as well. To cameras as they exist today have traditionally SDI or HDMI outputs. And so you're obviously, and uh, uh, hopefully very soon we're going to start to see cameras with network outputs, which, which uh, I mean, they, they all have the technology internally to them. It's just a matter of building, you know, b b building it and getting it into there. But, the, and the, you know, there's obviously that always takes time. But you have a camera today that has an SDR and HDMI output. Now, what you can do today is you could attach that either to one of our products, like a TriCaster. The moment it's connected to that product, um, that source is now vi visible to anybody else on the network, not just that product itself. We're working with all the major vendors of capture cards today so that um, if you just hook it up to a capture card and run a little piece of client software on that, on that machine, it will be exposed to the network as well. So if you've got, if you're doing a production in one room in the building and you happen to have a camera with a capture card in another room in the building, they're just going to see each other. Now over time, I think this is going to evolve because I do think that we're going to start to see network being built directly into cameras. Obviously, a lot of the, the graphic systems and virtual set systems, I mean, in a modern TV environment, a lot of the content is actually being created by computers. So those, those sources already are fully IP enabled. And we've worked with a you know, really very large number of vendors already to get IP support into those. And for them, it, it's a very natural leap. But you know, I, I think it's just a matter of time before we see cameras having direct IP out. So once you're on the network, you can intercommunicate without any further conversions or processes. But that's exactly right. So within, within our products, um, the, every, everything acts like it's a network source. Now, some of these sources might be hooked directly up to the system, but to us, that really makes no difference. At the end of the day, every, everything, is, everything is freely interchangeable, so every, every input within the product is treated equally. They can all be a source that's either local, they could be remote, they can be any resolution, they could have you know, alpha channel or no alpha channel, audio, no, I mean, they're all completely you know, equal. And the moment you go to network, things like resolution, number of audio channels, all these things, are, they're just kind of how many more packets you want to send, which is very interesting because now, you know, you're not necessarily, you're tied to how much bandwidth you've got, but you're not tied to, is this a 3G or 12G cable or, or even the standards like that. I mean, mm. everything can interoperate mm. even as resolutions, frame rates, audio channels and standards change, which is actually in itself a huge thing um, as well. Once it becomes IP, it's IP, and anything that understands that IP signal, um, irrespective of resolution, will be able to work with it. Well, that's absolutely fascinating. Thanks very much, Andrew, for joining us. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. I, I always enjoy talking to you, and it's been a great conversation.